What's going on everyone and welcome to episode 23. So I decided to make this video after a couple friends of mine asked me to walk them through the entire setup process for Python. So I figured why not share that knowledge with you guys so that everyone can know how to use Python. So today we're going to learn where to download Python, how to install it on your computer, where you can write actual Python code, how to access Python anywhere in your computer, and five, how to import packages. Timestamps are below, so let's go! So in order to download Python, you can visit python.org slash downloads. Now, usually an older version of Python once or twice removed is better to download than the latest version because there's been more testing involved to see if it's compatible with any libraries that are third party. As of this recording, the latest version is Python 3.9.4. Now the previous version, 3.8.9, does not work for Mac OS Big Sur, so I'll go one version back to 3.9.2, which we can get right here. So in order to actually install this, we can scroll to the bottom, select our version right here, so I'll select 3.9.2, and then we have to select either 64-bit or 32-bit. So for Mac users, you can figure out whether you have a 64 or 32 bit computer by typing this in the terminal. Get conf long bit and for me it says 64 which means I have a 64 bit MacBook Pro. If you are a Windows user, click on the link in the description below as there are different instructions for Windows 7, 8 and 10. So for me, I'll select this one. It downloads, we can open it up. And then from here, we'll just have to follow the instructions in the installer and then click install. On a Mac, Python is automatically added to the path, which means it can be accessed anywhere in the computer by typing Python in the terminal. For Windows, it should also be added automatically. Now, if you don't get a prompt to add Python to the path, then you know it's already been installed. However, if you do get a prompt, make sure to check yes. All right, two down, three to go. Now we're going to learn where we can actually write Python code. So there's two options you can choose from. Either you can use a text editor or an IDE. A text editor is something like Notepad, Emacs, or Vim. Basically, it's just a place for you to write text. Granted, some text editors like Vim have so many bells and whistles that if you know how to use it, you can become like stupid efficient. However, the learning curve is pretty high. Text editors in general can be pretty scary for novice programmers because there aren't any tools to actually help you with the programming. It's just you and the editor. That is where an IDE comes in, otherwise known as an interactive development environment. This is separate software that gives you numerous tools to actually help you with programming. Who would have thought, right? Someone wrote code to help you learn how to code. That joke was a 12 out of 10. So there's a few popular IDEs that Pythonistas love to use. My favorite is Spider, which was originally built for data analysis and machine learning. It's what I use in every video and I find it to have the perfect balance of necessary and helpful, but optional features. The learning curve is also pretty flat, so you won't be overwhelmed the first time you use it. Next is Jupyter Notebook, also specifically built for data analysis and data science. I like it because it uses cells rather than one long block of code. You can write your code in different cells and then execute all of them at once, or pick individual cells to execute. It's great for organizing your code and testing out specific portions at once, rather than doing everything line by line. It also has cell magic, which gives you some neat functionality. You usually write it as the first line in the cell, and they all follow the same format of writing 2% symbols, and then the command afterwards. My favorite is time it, which tells you how long it took the cell to run. Some other notable features are embedding JavaScript code within the cell, as well as being able to output the contents of the cell to a text file without resorting to the standard Pythonic way. All thanks to cell magic. Next is PyCharm, which was created specifically for Python, and what I used the first time I learned how to code. It's packed with a ton of features to help improve your workflow, but to be honest, the first time I used it, it felt very clunky and it didn't really get any better, so I decided to scrap it. That said, I do know many people that use it and love it, so to each their own. 
After this is the OG Visual Studio. It has so many different features, it can almost feel overwhelming, but it's a very popular IDE that's used both professionally and for coding hobbyists. So people like Visual Studio because you can use it for so many different programming languages. So the basic rationale is why not just learn one IDE and get really good at it and then apply it for my different projects rather than learning a set of IDEs for different programming languages. Lastly, you have IPython, which really isn't an IDE, but I thought I'd mention it here. It's basically like the terminal, you know, that big black box that looks really scary, but isn't. It's pretty scary. But in this one, everything's color coded, so it's a little bit easier to navigate. A little bit. To be honest, I wouldn't recommend it for beginners, but if you're up to the challenge, I say go for it. All right, next up, we're going to learn how to add Python to the path. Adding Python to the path lets you access it within the terminal or command line by calling Python and then adding the complete file path of the program you want to run. For Windows, check out the link in the description for a detailed guide on how to do this. Now for both Windows and Mac users, you can check if it's already been installed by opening up the command line or terminal respectively and typing Python 3. If you don't get command not found, then it means it's in the path and you're set. However, if you do get that, follow this. Chances are, on a Mac, Python is installed in this location. Users, your username, library, Python, the version number, and then bin. Now double check to make sure by actually going to this path. However, when you download Python, it should tell you where it's being downloaded to. Now if you want to see the library folder, it's naturally hidden. You can view it by clicking command space period, which will show all hidden files. So if the path exists, copy it, open the terminal and type this sudo nano etc paths. Click enter, put in your password. It won't show up as you type due to a security feature. Click enter and you'll be shown all the paths on your Mac. From here, hit the arrow key all the way down to the first blank line, paste the path, click control X and type the letter Y to save changes. To check if this works, type Python 3 in the terminal and see if you still receive that error message. If you don't, it should look something like this. This is now a Python console, so I can type something like this. And it's able to print it out just like it would function in any IDE using our Python code. Now we'll cover importing packages with pip. Pip is Python's package manager, which is a neat little tool that conveniently downloads and stores your packages in one location rather than having to find it yourself. You can also uninstall packages with pip and it does all the legwork of finding the files to install rather than you having to search for it manually within your computer. So we can install packages with pip, but what exactly are packages? It's basically a collection of code that's been written by many people and it allows you to perform all sorts of complicated operations without having to write the hundreds or thousands of lines of code yourself. Packages exist for all sorts of applications. Some famous ones are Pandas for data analysis, Pillow for image processing, and Scikit-learn for machine learning. Each of those packages I just mentioned have been thoroughly optimized and peer-reviewed. However, experimental packages do exist that are either limited in functionality or they're just not written well so they can break under certain edge cases. After all, it's just a bunch of code that's been written by a group of people to solve a given problem. So with the number of developers around the world, it's pretty easy to actually come up with a library or a package. So here is how you can import packages. Open up the terminal or command line, type pip install and then the name of the package you want to install. I'll use pandas for this example, even though I already have it installed, but you would just type pip install pandas, click enter, and then wait for everything to be installed. If pip says it can't find the package, make sure that you typed the package name in correctly. You can find this in the docs that come with each Python package. So now that it's installed, you can call it in a Python program. So I have spider up in the background. Now we can just type import pandas and you're all set. Now, if you don't want to use pandas every time you have to call a method, because right now we'd have to write something like pandas.dataframe, where this can get kind of tedious, 
you can write import pandas as pd or whatever you'd like and then you'd only have to type pd to refer to pandas so now i can write pd.dataframe and i can access the data frame method like so you can also import specific methods from a library if you only need to use one or two rather than importing everything at once so now we can write from pandas import data frame and now we've only imported data frame so to use it we just have to type data frame and proceed with the rest of the code so hopefully that's enough to get you started with python but if there's anything that i missed or something you'd like to see in a future video please let me know in the comments below also make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one it's pretty scary.